So I've just received this 50th anniversary model. It looks great and I'm ready to get into the control box. So this is going to be our, our first video exploration here. For the modern control boxes, there are four screws, one, two, three, four. And uh, that's true for all of them. In the modern cases, here is an Allen screw, two millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, as opposed to the traditional Bristol screws, be sure you know the difference. If it's if it's old, it's going to be Bristol, and if you use the wrong tool, you'll screw up, screw up the screws, and the Bristol screws are basically irreplaceable. So to remove the control box, besides those four screws, there's only one thing you need to remove, and that is the focus knob. So I'll start with the small Bristol screw driver and that and hopefully this will come off quickly. It unsnaps neatly, just slides right off, and I'll put this in my parts bin. Then we'll get our Allen screws. The other thing that sometimes needs to be done uh, to remove this, the, uh, the tube rotation brakes can sometimes bind a little bit, and we'll want to remove one or both of those. We'll probably remove them anyway for cleaning and lubricating. So you don't need to remove either of the two levers here. You don't need to remove the axial cap. You don't even need to remove the, um, the eyepiece holder. There, that's the last screw. And it's feeling loose. Now the next thing I'm gonna hear is a little clunk inside because connected to the finder prism lever is, um, is the finder prism inside. There's a linkage there where a pin is gonna pop out. If you're curious, you'll probably want to remove the axial port cover here. And okay, that square brass bar at one end, at its upper end, connects to the shaft of the, uh, the finder lever knob on the exterior. At the other end, you can see a little hole. That is a little roll pin, and that has a, a roll pin sticking out the other side that engages that piece of sheet metal that has a spring attached to it. So as you pivot that, it uh, rotates that. I'll be careful here because the screws aren't attached, but you can see how that shifts it. So when we're putting this back together, we're gonna wanna get that pin into the hole. Notice how kind of jerky that is, it kind of chug, 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 chug. I'm not doing that. We probably have some lubrication to do in there. And so I'm leaving it in the in the shifted position here, the spring is in the relaxed condition, so there's a lot less energy to go spring when I pull this out. So I'm gonna let you see if I can, as I pull it out, what happens. Wobble, 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 and with one hand, get that shifted off the, the focus knob. You didn't really hear it clunk, but there's our control box, and there's the action on the inside there. Everything looks like it's supposed to. We're inside the control box now, and here is how that uh, Barlow lever operates. You can see in one position it shifts it into the path, in the other position it shifts it out. You can see lots of fairly fresh lubrication. Uh, instead of being decades old, well, maybe it's uh, 10 or 20 years old, but not 50 years old. The, the lubricant looks fine. It's not presenting resistance. The one thing I notice is there's a little bit of just kind of a rattly wobbliness. Doesn't affect performance. There's no reason to do anything about it. But if it bugs you, I'm gonna explain one thing I suspect might help that. And that is that beneath the that brass arc-shaped element, there is a there's a little lever with a slot in it. This is a pin that rides in that slot, and this lever with the slot is connected to the knob. So that swings as you pivot the knob. Beneath that is a little copper leaf spring. That copper leaf spring has a little bow and presses up against the that knob lever with the slot. I don't think it's really pressing very hard there. Um, it could use a little, a little more of a firm connection. Perhaps if I readjusted that knob to, to uh, suck the lever 
more in an outward direction and tighten it up, that could help. Uh, we can experiment with that. But nothing really needs to be done here. On the left is, there is that pin that's going to engage what we need to, uh, when we need to reassemble this. So sometimes um, you might have a very rough uh, Barlow action here and that, that grease could be degraded. So there are three screws that you need to remove. You can see them, the two below and the one above. I like to avoid removing this one way back here because it's, uh, it's a real pain to get back in there. You, you kind of need um, tweezers and a miracle to uh, get that in place. Each one of these has a little um, washer that is what captures the, that arc-shaped bar into the track. And so generally I would loosen that top one up there um, if you're uncertain how many turns you get before it falls out, practice on the easily accessed ones in front there, and, um, and then you can slide the whole Barlow unit out, um, and that's a nice way to get the Barlow cleaned on all sides. Not necessary, but if you really feel like taking it down, the real reason is because you want to get this thing lubricated. And that will make a very big difference if there's any stiffness or resistance, um, the lubrication will fix it. And you can see you, all you need to lubricate are the little channels, these little channels here. There's little steps that that bar rides in and then the upper surface of the bar only along the edge right where it's going to contact those, um, those washers. So I've determined that it's not really a wobbly spring here because I can see when I'm moving things that, and you may not, but I can, I can feel some tension there and I can see the spring springing, but not while I'm holding the camera. So what I'm finding is that it's the, um, it's the, the whole, Barlow arm is just a little rattly in there. And I'm hoping that a little more grease is just gonna smooth that down. I'm also gonna look at those washers and see if if maybe they're flared up or can be tightened over or something, you know, bent down to just clamp it a little more tightly. So this is gonna get removed and, um, and cleaned and re-lubricated just because I feel like it. Those three little screws are tight, so my jeweler's screwdriver is not a good way to start. So I'm gonna start with my, my Brownells um, finest blade here. Brownells is gunsmithing tools and they're definitely the ones to use. Notice how that blade has a square end because of this concave tip. That's what you want to keep your screws nice. I've loosened that upper hidden screw and I've uh, removed the two lower screws and now I'm just going to pick this thing up and take it out just like that. That gives a nice view of the um, that spring. This is the lever that's connected to the knob and and you can see those little ledges that that this all rides in. So I'm just going to clean that all up, put some fresh lubricant on it. I use this Helimax grease works really well and it's good enough to go inside of uh, zoom lenses so I know it's not going to creep and cause harm. I'd like to explain a little bit about that Barlow lever here. You can see I can pivot it. I like the action here. It gives a little bit of a, a peak of resistance at the midpoint and biases off there. If I wanted to remove that and get that spring out of there, I could. I would have to remove this knob with the simple um, set screw there. You can unscrew this set screw, loosen it up, and when you remove this, we have another another thing there. So this is a, a, has a large pocket in it. The set screw doesn't bear on the shaft. Here's the important thing. That's not just a regular shaft in there. That is a threaded rod. So you're gonna have another set screw there. That's the little small bristle screw. But you need to loosen that where it has 
probably munched up the, the threads of that shaft, you'll unscrew this, um, this bushing from it. And how tight that bushing is screwed on determines how far that little lever extends, either presses against the spring or um, extends forward. So there's a little room to, to give there, but you can see that you've just got to, you got to get that set just right. If you get that bushing too tight, this whole thing is going to be too tight. If you get it too loose, you're going to get some kind of rattling effect that you're not going to want. So it's got to be just right. I'm going to forego the needless opportunity to take that off because every time you take one of these Questar set screws that's bearing against a threaded thing, you have a hard time. You've got basically damaged steel screw threads and then a machined aluminum um, hole, a threaded hole for those threads. And then that machined aluminum is going to get all bitten up by those threads. So this is a good system to install once and forget it. Um, I'm not a big fan of, of set screws that bear against and damage screw threads, but um, if you're only going to go at it once every 50 years, it's probably not a real big deal. So I'm going to leave that alone, but be forewarned, that's, the, that's your trick if you have to get deeper into your Barlow control. So I cleaned things out. Some of that um, amber grease was a little uh, boogery and sticky. I replaced it with my white Teflon grease and all the surfaces that contact, I put a little light amount of grease on. Um, I'm hopeful that this is going to smooth things up a little bit. There were places that weren't greased that I, where there's some contact between the moving parts where you might want to put a thin film on there. The uh, screw here is loose and now I'm going to get these other screws installed after making sure they're clean because those brass washers are bearing surfaces. Notice I have that little screw balanced there on its tip with a little goop of grease to hold it in place. Wish me luck while I get the my jeweler's screwdriver to try and screw that in without knocking it over, and I'll do the same thing on that other, other one too. And I'll pretend that was easy and took me just a second. Now let's see how that operates. I'm not getting any of that rattle feeling anymore. The, having the grease in place um, solves a lot of sins. I can see I've got a little excess that I'm going to mop up with a, uh, a Q-tip because I don't need to have grease where there's nothing going to be contacted. Another thing that I did here, just a little trick that I tried in a condition where things were a little loose, is I took these washers and as I tighten the screw down, I push them to have a greater extension and overlap over that brass bar. And I'm not sure if that made any difference, but it didn't hurt and it feels real good. I'll also get this knob back in place just to reduce my parts clutter. I already have the Barlow set to the angle I want. I'm not used to doing this with one hand left-handed. I'll be getting a little tripod shortly that's going to make this a little easier for filming. So I'm just going to tighten that up when it's in the orientation that I like. Oh, I gave it quite some loosening before. And it seems to work nicely. A good torque does the job. Flop, flop. And it's nice in vertical position when it's in the in the um, in the position in the optical path, which makes it look nice.